we just welcome you guys to ECS 1601, which is uh, macroeconomics. Right. So is is the norm? It is always good to know the structure of the module that you'll be studying. Uh, if you check here on the table of contents, unit number one, it has to do with production, income and spending. So that is what you're going to start looking at, production, income and spending. Then you're going to look at the monetary sector. You look at the government sector, foreign sector, measuring the performance of the economy, simple Keynesian model, Keynesian model with the government and foreign sector, aggregate demand and supply curves, inflation, unemployment, and lastly, we we'll look at economic growth. So altogether, there are about 11 topics or subunits or units, I don't know what they are, right, that you're going to be considering. <clears throat> okay. So without wasting much time, let's look at unit number one, which is production, income, and spending. I'm sure you are familiar with uh, some of the terms because we, you did consider them when you're doing the microeconomics, that is the 1501. All right. An economy is actually driven by three flow variables. And these three flow variables, they are production, like you said, income, and spending. They are called the three major flows, right? These are called the three major flows or flow variables in the economy. We are also going to look at um, what are called stock variables. We'll look at them after flow variables. They're also what are called stock variables. So what is the distinction between the two? A flow variable and a stock variable. What do you think, Leon? Um, no, I don't know, right? <laughs> All right, okay, it's fine. When you look at a flow variable, right, is the way it's suggesting is something that is flowing, is it? It's moving, it's not static. So a flow variable actually, uh, it's measurable over a period of time. You are measuring it in time. That is over a period of time, right? So that means we can talk about okay. production in a year. But as you can see, there's time period associated with it, production in a year. Then you can talk about income in a year, spending in a year, depending on what time period you are looking at. So a flow variable, it always has time element attached to it in the sense that it, it happens over a duration of time. That is a flow variable. Right. Whereas when you look at a stock variable, this one is it's, it's only measured at a specific point in time. So don't worry about it. You're going to define it when you look at the stock variable. So for now, we just want to focus on these three major flaws. Right? So which means these factors, they happen at the same time. They all feed off each other and stimulate each other. So what do we mean here by saying that they, they feed off each other and stimulate one another? Right? So this simply means that we can't have income without production or without spending. You can't have production without income or spending. You can't have spending without income or production. There is interdependence between these three major flows in the economy. They depend one, I mean, they depend upon one another. Right. So if you think about it in terms of a circular flow diagram, we can have production, right? And then we can have income. And then you can have spending. Okay. Production leads to 
income, then income is spent on production. You can actually uh, make a statement, a sensible statement which connects all these three. We are saying production leads to income, then the income is spent on production. So as you can see, it's, it's circular, is it? From one, it goes to another, from another, it goes to, to the next. So that is the interdependence which exists between these three major flows in each and every economy. Right. And then for production to, to take place, we look at what are called factors of production. I don't know, what do you think? What are factors of production? What are um, factors um, of production? Uh, I don't know, I've, 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 I haven't done this in a long time, eh? All right, <laughs> it's fine. So factors of production, um, these are things that are used up in the production process to create goods and services. That is the factor of production, is it? So factors of production, we are looking at things that are used up. They have to be literally used up in the production process to create goods and services, right? Okay. And okay. they are four factors of production. There are four factors of production. We have land, there are two else. Factor of production number one, there is land. There is labor. There is capital. And lastly, we have got entrepreneurship. Right, entry. Entrepreneurship, of course, is written down there. Right. And entrepreneurship. So these are the four factors of production. All right. So these are the four uh, factors of production. Sometimes economists they also define a fourth factor of production which is technology. It's also sometimes put in, but however, some they argue that technology is part of capital. So that is why that most of the times when they say four factors of production, you're coming from land, labor, capital to entrepreneurship. But don't be surprised to okay. see some or some literature mentioning technology. Right? We can also define it as a factor of production. So what's important for you to remember is that effect of production, it is something that is used up in the production process to create these goods and services. Okay. So when these factors of production are, are used up, they generate income. Is it? Remember we said production generates income. Okay. Yeah. So when a factor of production is used up, it generates income to whoever is selling that particular factor of production. So for example, when land is sold, what name do we give to the income or to the remuneration? You get what is called rent. When labor okay. is sold, what name do we give to the income that is generated. We call that salary. Right. Salary. Or wage. When capital is used up, what name do we give to the income that is generated? We call it interest. Okay. okay. Right. And lastly, when entrepreneurship is being used, the income that is generated 
it is called profit. So those are the enumerations to a particular factor of production that is used up in the in the production process. Right. And then uh, there's a distinction, of course, we, we did mention it between macroeconomics and and micro. Right? Microeconomics studies variables that affect the economy as a whole. That is what we're going to be looking at. We are looking at variables which affect the economy as a whole, not just a segment of the economy, but rather we are looking at economy as a collective entity. So if a variable affects the whole economy, then it becomes part of macroeconomy or macroeconomics that we can study. While it's a microeconomics, we are basically studying the individual parts of the economy. For example, a particular industry, maybe it's a car manufacturing industry, or maybe it's an energy sector or it's farming sector. When you study it in isolation, it is part of microeconomics. Companies and products in isolation, that is part of microeconomics. So this particular module we are studying macro. So that means production, income and spending. These are things that we start in macroeconomics because you're looking at total production, you're looking at total income, you're looking at total spending of each and every element of the economy. Right. Why does production take place? Why does production take place? Production takes place because we have got needs and wants, is it? As yeah. individuals, there are things that we need and want. We need goods and services. So for us to have those or to satisfy the needs of the goods and services, production has to take place because it is only through production that we're able to get goods and services. So that is why production is, is a very important aspect of the economy, because through it, we're able to get the goods and services that can meet one's demands or one's wants. All right. Okay. Production, therefore, it is the one that reacts to supply and demand. Right? Not the other way around. Supply and demand, they don't depend on production, but rather it is production which depends on the supply and also on the demand of a particular product. Okay. All right. The economic process is as follows, right? So we just quickly look at the economic process. We have got households who own the factors of production. We have mentioned those four factors of production and who owns them, they are owned by households, is it? So anything that is a factor of production that you can think about, it comes from households. All right. Firms then use the factors of production to produce goods and services. Then firms pay income or returns to factors of production, to households for the factors of production. Then households use the income to spend on goods and services. So as you can see, we have that interdependence which also exists between households and firms. These two cannot exist independently of each other. Right? So that is why um, if you look at a symbol economic model with only two market participants. Let's think of a simple economic model with only two market participants. A model that is got uh, firms. Model. 
that is good households. So that is a simple model with only two uh, participants, firms and households. All right. So these two, they depend upon one another or they can interact through markets. Right. On one end, we have what is called the, the goods market. And then we also have what is called the interest market. Right. So like I said, household or firms, or let's start with households, they sell factors of production to firms via the factors market. Right. So from households, we have got factors production. We are coming from households going to firms. All right. So that is a one way in which we have got a flow from households to firms because of these factors of production. And remember, we mentioned these factors of production to be land, labor, uh, capital, and entrepreneurship. Those are the factors of production which are coming from households going to firms. Right. So, firms, it is called, sometimes called the productive sector of the economy. The reason being that this is where production takes place. It takes place with the firms. So, hence, it is called the productive sector of the economy. Right? And when firms produce through production, which is Flow number one, like through production, they are going to supply these goods and services to households. Like these goods and services, goods and services. So they're coming from the productive sector, that is house, uh, that is firms going to the households. Right? So households, these are consumers. The reason why, because they get goods and services from, from the firms, which is the productive sector. Right? However, households, they don't just supply firms with factors of production without getting anything they have to get an income, is it? So that income comes from, from firms. So to households, it becomes an income from their perspective because they are getting money. Then to firms, when they take money out, that is called spending. So as you can see, we do have got those flaws. We have got spending. And income. Okay. And then uh, the same applies to firms. They don't just give goods and services to, to households. Households, they've received income. So the income that they've received is going to go to firms. So from the perspective of households, when they take money out of their pocket, that is spending. When firms receive money, that is income. So what I've drawn here, this is called the circular flow model of a simple economy. Right. It's called a circular flow model of a simple economy. So the reason why this economy is simple because it is only made up of two 
participants, households and firms. We have ignored the government sector. We have ignored the monetary sector. We have also ignored the foreign sector. We are going to also look at a model that extends to include all those other market participants. But what was important is for you to appreciate that these two and subsequently the other ones that we had, they are linked together, is it? Through production, spending and income. All right. uh, these are called markets. Right? It's another aspect that you should also be in a position to, to appreciate. Where households and firms interact, or where market participants interact, we call it a market. So we have got a factors market, that is a market where the factors of production, land, labor, capital is bought and sold. So households, they are sellers in the factors market. As you can see here, they are selling it to firms. And then firms, they are buyers in the factors market. When you go to the goods market, the opposite becomes true. In the goods market, households, they become buyers because they're getting goods and services through spending. And then firms, they are sellers, they supply goods and services to get, to get an income. <coughs> Hopefully it's, it's quite clear. <coughs> yeah. Then in this secular floor model, we can identify what is called the outer floor. This is called the outer floor. which is the flow of goods and services or the flow of real things. Right? As you can see, goods and services, these are real things. Factors of production, these are real things. So the outer flow, sometimes it is called a real flow. Why? Because it represents the flow of actual goods and services or so actual things. That includes also factors of production. So the outer flow in the secular flow model, it is called a real flow. So the outer flow in according to what I've drawn here, it is flowing in an, in a clockwise direction. As you can see here, we've got a secular flow, it's in a clockwise direction, right? Then we have got also an inner flow, which opposes the outer flow. If the outer flow flows in the clockwise direction, then an inner flow opposes that in an anti-clockwise direction. The inner flow, it is called a nominal flow. Why do you think it's called a nominal flow? Let me hear from Shelly. Why is the inner flow called a nominal flow? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Babes, you, you want to try? Um, mm -mm. All right. It's fine. What about Leon? Still rusty? <laughs> yeah, I'm still rusty, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, okay, don't worry. So the inner circular flow is called a nominal flow. Why? Why? Because it represents the flow of money. Mm. That is a nominal flow. But a nominal flow, it represents the flow of money. Oh, money. Don't have okay. real things or tangible goods. Then the real flow, it is the flow of goods, services, and the factors of production. It consists of things that you can actually touch. That is All the right. flow. It flows the real things. <clears throat> All right. Okay. And then uh, another aspect that uh, I think I didn't mention it. When you look at these factors of production, land, labor, capital, you want to look at exactly what they are. What is land in the economy? Uh, 
land it represents all the natural resources that is land anything that is or anything that occurs naturally that was made by god it is classified under land in economics so natural resources that is the, physical, the actual land water air that we breathe mineral resources plants etc is classified under land so some you might think that we've omitted like natural resources they are actually part of land then labor it represents our skills capital these are many made factors of production anything that is made from or by humans to produce for the purpose of producing goods and services it is classed as capital so it is not money from for those who are doing accounting i know when you hear capital you, you always think about money in economics capital represents a totally different thing capital it represents many made things that are used in the production process things such as machinery things such as buildings things such as uh, maybe it is motor vehicles that are used for the transportation of of raw materials or goods and services that is part of capital so money is not a factor of production the reason being that money is not used up in the production process when you manufacture a phone you can't point like that is the particle of money is it like that is a very very small money there you can't point it it's not there is it because we don't use money in the production process but however you can point something else when you say land you mean natural things for example if it's a phone maybe it's made up of there are plastic items that are, that comes from plants so plants are actually used up maybe there is a, there is glass that comes from silicon from the soil so it's actually used up etc right so man is not a factor of production <laughs> So we want to look at um, the main participants now in the economy. We have mentioned two, and we have seen how they are related. We have mentioned households and firms. These are the uh, two main participants in a simple economy. We've got households and firms. Then, like I said, we can also extend that list to include government, the foreign sector, and also the monetary sector right. and sometimes these are called sources of spending in the economy why are they called sources of spending because they all spend households spend firms spend just like we saw they spend to buy the factors of production households spend to buy goods and services government also spend by buying the goods and services they also spend by buying the labor from from households the foreign sector is also part of spending right remember foreign sector represents a foreign economy so our locally produced goods from the by the firms they can also be consumed outside of the domestic economy so the foreign sector is also another source of spending in the economy we have uh, identified what um, the flow variable is we did mention that because we say that production income and spending these are the three major flows so a flow variable like i said it is time dimension and can only be measured over a period of time you need to also know examples of flow variables right examples here production income spending okay then others let me see okay they are not included right. what other flow variables guys can you think about apart from production income and spending 
what other flow variables can you think about? Mm -hmm. uh, if you can remember, I said a flow variable, it's measured over a period of time, maybe be it a year, a month, a semi-annually, quarterly, biannually. So as long as a variable that you can measure over a period of time, it becomes a flow variable. So it's got production, income, spending, right? Others, you can think about um, right, other examples of flow variables. Right, you can think about unemployment. Mm, okay, unemployment doesn't really fit so well. Uh, let me think of something else. Right. So these are some other examples that you can think about. Depreciation, imports, exports, you can measure them over a period of time. Right. Then whereas when you look at a stock variable, like I said, we, it has no time dimension. That means you can only measure it at a particular point in time. Right. Examples, wealth, inventories, savings, account balance, right. we measure them at a particular point in time. So those are examples of stock variable. So it's always good to know maybe six six examples of each because this question it, it often comes in an exam, especially one way by they ask you whether a given particular variable is stock or its flow. So if you can have a list of at least six flows and six stock variables, uh, you we have uh, quite a good chances of, of getting it right in the exam. <clears throat> So we have mentioned this uh, source of production. Right? Money is not a factor of production. Right? The remuneration, we have mentioned it. All right. So perhaps now we can go on to look at a more detailed analysis of the spending entities in the economy. All right. So what I want to do, I want to show you a, a more general Circular flow model that includes not only households and firms but also the other market participants. It is basically an extension of that other model that I did draw for you. In the simple model, like I said, we have got uh, households. and uh, the firms okay. that is a simple model like the one that i drew before right. and then i just want to only consider the inner circular flow if you can remember i said the inner circular flow it is a flow of what is it a real flow or is it a nominal flow nominal Yes, exactly. It's a nominal flow. So this model, we only want to consider the flow of money. We are not considering the flow of goods and services. Right. So we have got money that is coming from uh, okay, in fact, let me interchange it like this. It doesn't matter how you put it, but I, I normally like it this way. I love to put uh, firms on top. Then I can put the households at the bottom. Then you've got money flowing. What do we call money that flows from firms going to households? Um. Okay. Uh, for household, that should be incomes, right? Yes, excellent. That is income. So whenever a household receives money, we call it income. Right. And in economics, we use capital letter Y to represent income. Right. 
So income, that is total income, we use capital letter Y. So income comes from firms going to households, right? And then we are going to include government sector. monetary sector in the foreign sector or abroad. These are the other editions. Okay. So we have got a monetary sector or financial sector. Monetary sector. Or sometimes it's also called banking. Let me use banking. Banking sector, financial, monetary is the same thing, or sometimes, uh, okay, let me not tell you about the other one. But, and then we have got the government sector, which is sometimes called the public. And then we have the foreign or abroad. when households receive money from firms in form of income, what do they use that income for? Buy. Spending. Yes, it is spent on what? Yes, it is spending. So the money is spent on what? On food. Mm -hmm. So, yes. So when money is spent on food, we call that consumption, right? So we can consume goods that are produced domestically. So this is called consumption of domestically produced goods. Right, that's what I want to put here. Right. This is consumption of domestic goods. I'm sure you can see my arrows that is coming from households going to firms. So it's important to also include this arrow. So that is consumption of domestic goods. And we use CD to represent consumption of domestically produced goods. So we we'll capital letter C in the subscript D to represent consumption of domestically produced goods, right? Is it all the money that is spent on consumption? Where does the other money go to? The other income that is received one, we have seen that it's spent on consumption. Then the remainder is spent on what? Clothing or is it part of consumption? Yeah, it's part, yes, it's part of consumption. The taxes? Yes. Debts? Yes. So, some it goes to savings. Mm. Right. The okay, to savings. Perhaps let's say some goes to taxation. Mm. This is called net taxation. And we use capital letter T to represent taxation. Right? And then some is also spent through consumption of foreign goods through what are called imports, represented by capital letter M. So we use capital letter M to, represents, to represent rather imports. Okay. Put and then the remainder is going to net savings. Households they also save. So net savings is represented by capital letter S. Right. So when money goes, as you can see, money is going away from the inner circular flow. So that means S, T, and M this creates what is called leakage. Oh, these are called with 
with drawers or leakages. So, what do you mean by withdrawals and leakages? Where is that between bank, government, and abroad? Yes. So, whenever, because look, Leon, money is supposed to be flowing within the inner circular flow. So, if money goes away from the inner circular flow through net savings, through net taxation, through imports, so S, T, and M, these are called withdrawals because money is being withdrawn from the inner circular flow model, or income is being withdrawn from the inner circular flow model. So, S, T, M, they are called withdrawals, or sometimes they are called leakages. Money is leaking out of the in a signal flow. So if money leaks out, money can also come back into the circular flow. Right? It can also go back like this. Right. So money that is coming from abroad, we call this exports. And we represent exports by capital letter X, right? So money has to come in to the circulation. Then from government, government also spends, government spend money with firms through what is called government spending or government expenditure. So this is called government expenditure. And it's donated by capital letter G. Then from banks, firms, they borrow money. Is it Money comes from banks going to firms through what is called investment. And it's represented by capital letter I. So when firms wants to indulge in capital projects, they borrow money from banks. So money has to come from banks going to firms through what is called investment. So I, G, and X. These represent what is called, if they are withdrawals, what is the opposite of that? These are called injections. X, let me start with I. I'm trying to draw a Kelly arrow. So it's I, G, and X. Remember, we have got, uh, I think I did drop off. We did have all exports here. Exports X. All right, so we have got injections, I, G and X, money coming into circulation, with the draws, S, T and M, money going out of circulation. So as you are going to see guys, one good thing about this diagram that I've drawn for you, this is a, a model. Remember, in economics, we always use models. A model is simply a representation of reality. We are trying to simplify it in such a way that it becomes easier to understand. So this is a model of the economy, or in other words, it's a model of all the market or economic participants. And there are five major firms, households, bank, or banking, government, and abroad. So throughout the study of this module, you're going to see that you are going, you look at um, the public sector, right? In fact, before the public sector, you're going to start with the private sector, which is good firms and households, that is the, uh, the private sector. Then from the private sector, you are going to look at the monetary sector. Right? If you look at you, the, the chapters that are presented uh, on, on 
on your textbooks, is it? So they start with the private sector, then you go to the monetary sector, which has got banks, financial institutions, right? ETC, we're going to look at what exactly they do. Then we look at the public sector, which is the government. And then lastly, you look at abroad, which is the foreign sector. So that is everything that you're going to be studying in this particular module. Look at the private sector, you look at the monetary sector, you look at the public sector, and lastly, you look at the foreign sector. So everything that you are studying, make sure that you're able to relate, you're able to know where exactly it fits into this circular flow model. That is one good thing about it.